Okay, we're good. Okay. All right. So, um, thank you. I see y'all's comments. Yes, I changed my hair. Thank you very much. But, but you guys, I have a surprise for you guys today. Literally, one of my good friends is on here with me, and he is so phenomenal when it comes to fundamental analysis. So I convinced him to hop on this call with us because um, this is like a once in a lifetime opportunity. He will not do this more than once. I already know this up front. Um, his name is Tony. Tony, can you take yourself off mute, please? Hello, hello, hello. Everybody hello, say, hey, Tony. Hey, Hi, Tony. Hello, Tony. Hello, Tony. Hello, Tony. Okay, hey, Tony. Tony. Okay, hello, guys, so first off today, like, I need you to get a pen and a sheet of paper, okay? That's first things first. Get a pen and a sheet of paper because the information that he's going to go over, you definitely want to make sure you take key to it. Um, you definitely want to make sure it's something that you make a part of understanding. Like he's even helped me with fundamentals. Like some stuff, I, st I still be like, wait, Mrs. Tony, run, run that back real quick. So definitely take key to what he's saying. Y'all know I'm technical analyst all day, but it's so much, so much, so much going on in the market when it comes to fundamentals right now that I wanted to just get his expertise on this call. So first off, thank him for this because it was a lot of, just know that he doing it for me. So just one, say thank you. Thank you. We appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Tony. Gratitude. All right, all right. Thank so, you. So thank you. Okay, so Mr. Tony, first thing, we, we're kind of going to have like a little bit of a conversation. And then if you guys have questions, definitely write your questions in the chat box if you have any questions for him. But uh, we're kind of going to make this session a little bit different because I do want to go in depth with like understanding fundamentals and understanding why it's important to trade using fundamentals and understanding like what is happening in the market. So first off, Mr. Tony, can you break down to us what's happening in the market right now? <clears throat> where the market is dying <laughs> it's been it's been on a slow steady pace for a while um and there's a like jessica was saying there's a lot of uh fundamentals that that go into this and the fundamentals uh even though you're a technical trader has a very 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 important role and it has a lot to do with what the market is doing right now uh one of the things that's one of the things that's happening is has a lot to do with oil, the coronavirus, the interest rates that the the Fed is implementing, the zero percent rates, uh, you know what they say, what they don't say, and how they say it. All those things play into your fundamental analysis. What they don't say is just as important as what they do say, and how they say what they say is important as what they don't say. And it's very confusing to understand, but it's the truth. Okay, so when it comes to, when you talk about like Fed rates, because I know a lot of people don't even know really what Fed rates are used for when it comes to fundamental analysis. So can you go like a little bit of detail in that? Okay, the, the number one, one of the primary things that the Federal Reserve uses, of all central banks use, um, are interest rates. And the United States Federal Reserve is the most important Federal Reserve central bank in the entire world. All the other Federal Reserve banks and central banks around the world take their cues from the United States Federal Reserve Bank, okay? So when they start dealing with interest rates, lowering interest rates, raising interest rates, that has a lot to do with the, the money flow, the liquidity in the market. As rates get lower, they're trying to stimulate the economy. As rates go up, they try to slow the economy. That's just the way it works, right? They have all kinds of rates. They got, you know, deposit rates, the you know reserve requirements that the bank has to have, uh, on the money they have to have on file, uh, they have to have deposit rates, which means basically that the banks get interest from the money that they have inside the Federal Reserve, the storage. And if the Fed wants them to add liquidity to the market, they play with those rates, right? Uh, by, by lowering the rates, right? Making them negative rates. If they make those negative rates, for example, what they are essentially doing is charging the banks to have money at the Federal Reserve System. So 
the banks don't want to pay to have their money stored, so they add money to the market. That's how the Fed gets money in and out of the in and out of the open market. Does everybody understand that? No. Can you repeat that? Can you repeat the part where he said, "If the rates go up, what does that mean?" And um, just explain that deeper, because I didn't understand it for real. Okay, when yeah. money gets cheap, right? Think of a think of a credit card, right? Because that's essentially what you're doing. You're buying on credit, right? When money gets cheap, credit card rates go down. Say they go down to three percent. So buy more or less, right? Anybody? People are gonna buy more. You're gonna buy more. Why? Why are you gonna buy more? Because the rates are low. Because the rates are low. It's, it's cheap money, right? You're gonna you're gonna buy houses. You're gonna buy cars. You're gonna you're gonna charge stuff on your credit card. You're gonna go get your hair done and charge it on your little card and everything. So when the, when the money gets cheap, the interest rates go down. Adds money to the economy. It stimulates the economy. When the interest rates start to go up, and they say, "Oh, we need to fight off, we need to fight off inflation," they start to raise the rates to slow the to slow the growth of the economy, to slow it way down, because it makes it more expensive to buy those same things, and that's how they control the money supply. Is everybody taking notes? Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Absolutely. Okay. All right, perfect. Um, Mr. Tony, can you do me a favor and explain this sheet for us? Let me put a piece of paper in front of me. Good Lord. Uh, what does that say? Doing the U.S. trading, blah, blah, blah. Number one, 13, two. Okay. What she is essentially showing uh, is the essence, is the levels. The New York Stock Exchange has some rules. And these rules were implemented after the big crash. Uh, after 9-11, right, when the market just free-fought almost to nothing. It just, it just died, right? So during the last financial crisis, they implemented these rules, level one, two, or three, right? And these rules are called circuit breakers, circuit breaker rules. And basically what that means is they, when the market starts to fall, they, want, they don't want it to fall freely. So when it hits level one, that means the S and P has 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 fallen seven percent, so they stopped the market from trading for fifteen minutes to let it cool off, right? And then they restart it. If it again falls to level two, which is thirteen percent, they stop the market again, and they let it cool off for fifteen minutes and they restart it. If it falls again to twenty percent, they stop the trading for the rest of the day. So that's important because if you're in a if you're in a trade or if you're about to enter a trade and you already at 6.5%, you may get stuck until that market cools. And you don't know what's going to happen when they start it back up. You don't know if it's going to cool and go back the opposite way against you, or if it's going to if it's going to cool and they start it back up and it still continues to go your way. It's just a very dangerous position to be in, right? When it cools. If you're in the after hours market, in the futures market, the circuit breaker level is, is level one, right? And that's 5%, right? They call those, they call that, that, that those levels limit down, L-I-M-I-T, down, limit down. So when they say the market is limit down, it hit one of those circuit breaker levels, right? When it's limit up, it's going back the opposite way, right? So... Just be aware of when you're watching your charts that the S&P is falling, right? You have to be aware of how much is falling already before you enter that trade. And that goes for the NASDAQ and the Dow Jones as well, right? Yes. Okay, perfect. All right. Um, also, can you please go in detail today about what happened with oil? Unfortunately, I wasn't looking at the charts today, but I can kind of give you a general idea of what happened okay. to oil. To, to oil. Mm -hmm. uh, as, as you all may be aware, the Dow fell almost 3,000 points, right? Which is roughly 30,000 pips. Who, who, who uses pips? Everybody use pips in here? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It, it fell about 30,000 pips today, right? 
It's very, very significant, okay? Uh, <clears throat> the thing that's happening with oil, and the, uh, we have to back up a minute, uh, really, but the thing that's, that's happening with oil is that there's a, there's a price war going on, right? Uh, between uh, OPEC and the non-OPEC states. Now, you wait, probably, everybody know what that is? I'm sorry. I don't want to cut you off, Mr. No. 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 Okay. Can you go over OPEC real quick? I was getting ready to. Okay, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> and, and please stop calling me Mr. Tony. Okay, Tony. <laughs> Make me feel old. Okay, well, Tony. Okay, thank you. No problem. Uh, the, 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 the OPEC, those, those, are the, those are the countries, those are the oil producing countries. Most of the oil, most of the oil producing countries. And they have come together and they say, we're going to regulate the oil industry with OPEC. All right. Now we have some countries, and that usually includes Saudi Arabia, Iran, Iraq, you know, places like that, right? Yeah, places like Russia was not a part of OPEC, right? So, but they, they agree under certain circumstances to adhere to OPEC rules, all right? They call that OPEC plus. So you got OPEC, and you got OPEC plus Russia. So they call it OPEC plus. And it's some other little smallest countries in there. But it's OPEC plus Russia. Now, <clears throat> Saudi Arabia used to be the biggest oil producer, right? But they can no longer move the market by themselves because there's so many oil producing countries. And the United States is really the number one producer of oil that most people don't understand that by using shale oil, S-H-A-L-E, shale oil, right? They found it some years back, right? And they, and they started to produce, and started to produce oil. Somebody said spell shale. Here it is right here, S-H-A-L-E, right? We got OPEC, OPEC, and OPEC plus, okay? All right, so what's happening now is um they're having a they're having a price war right and they're producing more barrels of oil than they ever produce and that's driving the price of oil down because it's a price war uh they asked russia about a week or so ago to reduce the barrels of oil so they can maintain oil prices at a certain level right russia said no right they said no because they want to cripple the United States shale oil industry. And that, that goes back to a lot of history between the United States and Russia and Putin, who basically starts to talk about uh, why Putin is mad at the United States for holding his money uh, and the United States banks and won't release it and all this kind of stuff. But, when, but that'll, that'll get us off track. So if you really start talking about oil, you really have to understand what countries produce oil and where the oil comes from. And when you have uncertainty in these regions, like over in the Middle East, where most of the oil producing countries are, and you know that their main commodity is oil, then you, get to, you start to understand that if there's uncertainty and there's unrest in the Middle East, oil is going to be affected some kind of way. Now, it may go up, it may go down. Depends on how, it depends on the news that's coming out of that region, right? And it also, to a larger extent, depends on the news that's happening in the world. So what's happening in the world right now that could be affecting the price of oil? Anybody? Corona. Corona. And how would Corona affect the price of oil? Lack of demand. Okay. Say that, well, say that's right. using people's movements, so they're probably using less fuel in transport, but maybe using more fuel in them. Yes, exactly. There, there, there is less travel, less jet fuel, less shipping, less manufacturing, right? Mm -hmm. So all of that, all of that. And China is, the, is, is one of the biggest consumers of oil, right? So when the factories are shut down, and when there's no people traveling back and forth, and when there's no goods being traveled back and forth, all of these fundamental things start to look very damaging to the price of oil. 
and the production of oil, right? So when you start looking at your fundamentals, you're going to have to start looking at what countries produce what, who are their trade partners, what do they need, what do they export, what do they import, right? And when you start to understand what these countries need and what they have to sell, then you can start to begin, you can, you can begin to understand how certain pieces of news affects the thing that you're trading. It makes sense? So what you're saying is now that these countries have produced all this oil and now they can't be consumed because the United States and China are the biggest consumers of oil. So since that everything happened. stopped moving, oil is now, you're going to say, that they just can't buy the oil because we're not using it. Is that, that what you're saying? Uh, yeah, there, I mean, there's no demand. There's little mm -hmm. demand. I mean, when when the country when the country when the companies are not running, they don't have as great of a need for that commodity, so they they buy less. So they, the the OPEC was trying to get the OPEC the oil producing countries to produce less oil to keep there from being an oversupply of oil, right? So they can maintain prices. But when Russia said, "No, we're gonna keep pumping." It, it, Saudi Arabia said, okay, we're going to keep pumping too. So now we got this price war. Who can get the, who, who can pump the most barrels and set it for the cheapest? And that's all great for the people who want to buy oil cheap and wait for it to go back to $100 a barrel. But it's very bad for the people who thought oil was going to shoot up and they're short. So that's what made our oil prices go down about a month or so or start going down. Say that last part again, please. Is, is that what made our gas prices starting to go down about a month or so ago? Yes. Mm -hmm. you're, starting to see, you're starting to see the effects of the oil prices at the pump. So if the U.S. produces shale oil, then why did President Trump say he wants to continue buying other oil also? Yeah, I don't know what that, I'm not going to say I presume to know what 45 is doing. I mean, uh, I mean, the United States has oil. I mean, they got, I don't know how many millions and millions of gallons. I think they had like 150 million gallons of oil stored up somewhere. But I can't presume to know why he's why he's trying to buy oil. I mean, I mean, I don't I don't know the I don't know what the production process is and the manufacturing process is for for shell oil. I'm not sure what is what's the uses of shell. So I really couldn't answer that question. So, so then does that mean that um, for oil to go back up, so then that means um, both of these, um, the OPEC and OPEC plus, they would probably need to reach like a common ground of understanding and for the supply to go back up or how would you, how would like, how would that now then be balanced? These yes, they would, they, they, would, they would have to, they would have to come in to some agreement that they're going to cut the, the production of oil to, a, you know, say a million barrels a day, whatever that was. Let the let the existing supply be consumed or stored or have whatever they're going to do with it, suck it out the market some kind of way. And it's also going to depend on the other factors that's going on in the economy. Even if even if even if they they agree today to reduce the number of barrels of oil that they produce, we still got Corona. We still have a war going on. We still got Iran shooting missiles over to Iraq, right? We we we, we still we still got a travel ban. You know, we we still have a president who doesn't really know what he's doing. We still have all these other things. So when you're looking at the fundamentals, the confusing part about it is it's not just one thing, mm -hmm. right? It's a it's a combination of all these little things. Now the big thing. The big thing that we have to remember, am I going too fast, Jessica? No, you're not. Okay. If I need to add, add any questions on this list that I'm writing out for them, then oh. let me know. Oh, good Lord. Got this. Um, well, I just put it on here just because, like, I know, like, everybody on here is kind of more so, like, technical traders and stuff like that. So I just don't want it to, like, like, when you broke down that list, when you were, like, to understand fundamental analysis, you need to know this. I know a lot of people did not write down those questions. So I'm just, like typing them out just so they can like really like grasp it. Okay, I got you. When, when, when you start to look at fundamentals, the way that I remember 
with the way I judge and classify fundamentals is based on the size of the thing. Right? Hey guys, can you um, put your everything on mute if you are not speaking? Thank you. The way that the way that I classify fundamentals, and this is just for me. I don't know how other people do it, but for me, the way I the way I determine the size and the scope of a fundamental thing is to, by the size of it. And by the size of it, I mean <clears throat> uh, how how big is it in relation to the other things in the market, right? For example, we just came out of earnings season, right? And it's very important that you all know. When that's when those earnings seasons are, you know, you can go look that up on on any on any website, and look up on any financial website to find out when the, what the earnings seasons are, right? Because it's very important for your trading. It's, it's it's one of those fundamental things that's going to give you a boost or or or, or a bump based on how that company performs, right? So look at earnings for a company, right? Um, <clears throat> so the size of the thing. If you're talking about earnings, for example, for a company, you got one company, Apple. Apple had great earnings, for example. This is an example. I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I don't know if they did or didn't. Um, but they had great earnings. Apple, no matter how great their earnings are, sits inside of a country. If the country had bad news, we had war. Okay, that's going to overshadow Apple's earnings most of the time. 99, let's say 95% of the time, right? Because the country is bigger than Apple. Now, say the United States as a country, lower interest rates to stimulate the economy, right? But there's overreaching talks of a global recession, right? Recession is bad for everybody. Make, price, make prices fall, people get nervous, they start pulling back on vacation, stop taking those extra trips. Stop buying that extra GI Joe with the Kung Fu grip. They stop doing things, right? Stop traveling, stop eating out. Don't know if they're going to lose their, their jobs. So they start pulling back, right? So since that recession talk is bigger than that country's individual interest rate, the, the positive interest rate news, that recession is going. The recession talk is going to tend to overshadow the positive news for that country. So the size of the thing matters. You got the country. You got the company the country in the world, right? You can even break it down by region if you want, or you know, however you need to classify it in your brain, right, in your head. But I classify it in those three levels, company, country, world, right? And the, the bigger it is, the more impact it's gonna have, right? Now, the thing that you have to remember with fundamentals is that it's not a one-to-one -one relationship. It's a, it's, a, it's a mixed bag of tricks. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Together, how, what does this mean in terms of me making a trade in this thing? Maybe you're trading in something that that thing doesn't affect, right? Or it doesn't affect immediately. Maybe it affected you know, too much down the road, right? So you have to know what it is you're trading and how those fundamentals affect it. Everybody's so quiet. Uh -huh. So they I have taking a it in. <laughs> they taking thing. it in. Was was the trade war prior to the coronavirus? The trade war was in the they oil was already under pressure anyway. You know when okay. that dude got killed, they they, they killed that dude, uh, the right. general cat. I can't think of his name now, right? They when that happened, all all started having pressures, right? And then they start talking about retaliation, right? The thing that you have right. to remember about, uh, one of the things that you have to remember about fundamentals is that it affects people's sentiment, right? And markets trade on sentiment. Am I feeling like it's blue skies and rainbows or is it cloudy and thunderbolts, right? If, if it's blue skies and rainbows, I'm feeling great. You know, I'm gonna go by, I'm gonna do this, the sun is out, the wind is blowing at 70 degrees, you know, nice little mist on my face. I'm good. I'm gonna go do what I need to do. Life is great. Storm clouds start rolling in. People get a little nervous. They start pulling back. Uh, I'm a little uncertain. I, I rather err on the side of caution. So I'm not sure about the market. So I pull back a little bit. So fear has a lot to do with it. And that's determines the sentiment of the market. 
I mean, it can it could be a bullish trend with a bearish sentiment, right? It could be going up now, but the underlying fundamentals are telling me it may be pulling back in a little bit because that's all this negative stuff coming around the corner. Does anybody ask a question? I'm asking questions. So, um, because <laughs> now I'm interested. Now, now you got me tired and you got me tired of the conversation. So, um, with the fact that oil, you know, the president did ask Russia to drop oil and they said no. Um, and then all of a sudden, this coronavirus came out of China, and China and the United States are the two big consumers in oil um, prior to everybody else. Um, would you say, I will ask correctly? Um, things were implemented because we do understand, you know, the art of war and how, you know, certain countries run their countries that things were implemented to make them have to stop production, sell off the oil that they have obtained at a price to where we can buy it at a cheaper price. And then further, them have to figure out a way to, um, how do I put this, sell oil later on at our demand or what we want oil to be priced at? Uh, I don't think so. No? Uh, what would be the situation as far as I, that? I don't, I, don't, I don't think so. Okay. Right. When you start talking about, <clears throat> when you start talking about uh, commodities, especially something like oil, right? You have to turn to the futures market, right? Uh, anybody in the futures market? Yes, y'all talk about that? The futures? Um, no, we just do technical analysis for the most part. Okay, when you when you start looking at when you start looking at things like oil, and they got all kind of stuff on the futures, like the lean hogs, gold, uh, silver, wheat, all corn, barley, all kind of crap, right? You start turning to the futures market, and what the futures market basically allow you to do is to lock in tomorrow's price today, right? If if they think that the price of oil is going to fall, they buy oil futures, or, or they, you know, they, they, if they think the price of oil is about to fall, then they sell oil futures, right? Somebody is going to buy them and somebody is going to sell them. If they think the price of oil is going to rise, then they buy oil futures, right? So they buy low, like, like, like a little receipt, sell high. Okay, okay. Right? So they say, say the price of oil, the price of oil goes on and the oil goes down to $10 a barrel, right? Now, they'll go buy a bunch of oil futures and say hey, the price of oil is going to go to $90 in the next, I don't know, 90 days. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. If it does, they bought it at eight bucks, right? And then the price rises and they sell it for $90 a barrel. If they, they have the product on hand, they still get it for that price as they pump it. it is that what you're saying? Yeah, they, they'll get it for that price. They're guaranteed to get it for that price. The, the, the person who sold them that futures has to honor that price, regardless if it goes to $1,000 a barrel. They have to honor it at $8. The price that they bought at $8, correct? Or yeah, That's correct. Okay. If, if the price falls below $8, then they lose. And they was betting that the price of oil was going to rise. But that's a whole other conversation, right? That's like that's just like a that's just like a glimpse into what futures are, and you can buy futures for all types of things. You can buy futures for interest rates, lean hogs. You know, I think the price, I think the price of lean hogs is gonna rise. Can you please explain your lean hog story? <laughs> <laughs> My lean hog story started off as a joke, right? I told the guy, I said, I'm gonna trade these lean hogs one day. So I did a, I did some studying on pigs. You know what affects pigs you know gestation period is what they eat you know you know how to breed pigs i learned everything you need with you want to know about a pig right and i have yet to trade lean hogs by the way i haven't done it yet but when you when you when you study that what you what you see is the price of lean hogs um is in a range for example it's in a futures market because when the when the farmers for example this is actually a good example because when the farmers say, I'm gonna sell these hogs to tomorrow, I wanna know what I'm gonna get for it before I do all this work. 
you know, if I get these hogs to, I don't know, what a hog weigh, 800 pounds, two, let's say 200 pounds. I got a 200 pound hog. I want to know that when I take it to the market in September, August, September, I'm going to get $1,000 for this hog. The only way for him to know that is on the futures market, right? The, the guy who's buying the hog say, yeah, I think $1,000 is a good price. And the farmer say, I can accept a good price. I can accept that price. If the price goes up, so what? $1,000. If the price goes down, so what? $1,000. That's what we agreed on. That's the power of the futures market, right? It sets a price tomorrow for stuff that you do today, right? And knowing, and knowing, for example, going back to oil, that oil is, I'm like 99.9999% sure oil is going to rise again, right? So as oil prices continue to fall to $30 a barrel, $20 a barrel, $15 a barrel, $12 a barrel, stuff like this, it may be a good time to buy oil because oil is not going to, oil is not going to go away. It's going to rise back up. I mean, you, if you get it, people are like, oh, I'm going to buy the dip. Eh, wait till it bottoms out. <laughs> How about bottoming out when it's $8 versus bottom, trying to buy it at 18 and 16 and 15 and 15? Wait till it bottoms out somewhere and everything starts to look rosy again. Like, I think I'm going to get in here at $10. I'm going to get here at $15. And let all go back to $65, $100 a barrel. That's when you buy oil. You can, you oh, you can buy it on the short. You can trade it. But you can also buy it and hold it. So you would buy it. If you understand, if you understand the fundamentals about what makes oil move. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So you would buy it in the futures market or you would buy it, like, right now within, like, um the currency market if that makes wait, sense. wait, okay. So I'm sorry. So Sophie, okay, so Tony, okay, 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 okay. So Tony, a lot of these people are like not everybody, but a lot of people are introduced to trading like through IML. So they only know like about trading like on the phone, MetaTrader 4 and stuff like that. So like a lot of people don't know about like the whole think and swim thing that we were talking about the other day, um, investing and like holding particular assets. They don't really know. Well, I don't want to speak for everybody, but a lot of people on here don't really know about the bonds market or like the commodity. Does everybody know like the four markets? You have the bonds market, you have commodities market, like you have the goods where well, goods are commodities, but like everybody understand that because I think mostly on this call, like a lot of people just understand like currency market, even though we know that you have to understand all of these deeper things to understand the currency market. But um, Sophie's basically asking, like, would you buy this through MetaTrader 4? And Sophie, no, is the answer to that question. So, Tony, can you go into detail of like how you would buy these particular assets? I think we're getting a little off track here, but okay. Oh? Yeah, we're getting a little off track here, Jessica. I mean, I just know that they don't <laughs> have that knowledge. Now, I understand, but uh, uh, I mean, you you can you can you can trade these assets like you like you normally would. You go on your chart, you see some price action, you say I'm gonna short it, I'm gonna long it, I'm a whatever, I'm a range it or whatever, right? Wait for the breakout. You can trade the you can trade it just like you do anything else. Yeah, it, it has a price, it has a time. You can trade it, right? But you can also buy and hold it. It's a commodity. You can buy you can buy oil just like you can buy corn or you know toilet paper, right? You can hold it. Now they're not going to ship, you know, fifty gallons of barrel to your house. They have a rule against that. But you can hold uh, the asset in this in this stock: Exxon Mobil, Chevron. You can you can buy an ETF, exchange traded fund, right? Right. And, and which essentially lets you buy a whole sector of something, right? You don't know which one of these companies, if you don't understand ETFs, look up ETFs, right? Uh, 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 ETF basically allows you to buy a whole industry, right? You don't know if Exxon is going to win or if Chevron is going to win. Who cares, right? Buy the ETF. When the, when the, when the oil goes up, they all go up, you make money. You don't have to know who's going to win. The industry is going to go up, so you buy the ETF. It's a big, it's a big thing if you understand that. Okay, all this stuff is selling. The, the travel ban has been lifted. Corona is under control. People are starting to travel again. Shipments, shipments are picking up. People are ordering stuff like they used to. The factories are working. 
It's summertime. The high travel season, right? The room that's finally cleared up was racket in the next three months, right in the time for the summer vacations, right? Everybody been locked in for three, four, six months. They're ready to get out. You think the price of gas is going to be? It's going to shoot up. Pump is going to go crazy, right? So if you understand what affects oil, for example, in, in our scenario, which is all the things we just kind of alluded to, then you know which direction oil is going to go. At least that's your bias. It may dip. It's gonna it's gonna have major trends and minor trends like anything else, but the overall direction you anticipate is going back up. But you gotta understand what affects that commodity. Who who are the who are the major who are the major importers, the major exporters? Who are their trade partners? Are they trade partners in trouble? If I can't sell you oil, right? You don't give me cash. You don't give me cash. I can't go to my trade partner and buy what he what, what I need from him. And he doesn't have money to go to his trade partner to buy what he needs. So people say these things, people think these things are not connected. But by one commodity doing poorly, it affects a whole slew of other things that could be doing poorly. Because I don't have cash to feed my family. If I don't have cash to feed my family, my family go hungry. So we're out here, we're doing all kinds of crazy stuff, right? We're gonna do this and we're gonna do that, right? Because we don't have we don't have the underlying money that we would have had had we sold our commodity, and that's how these countries operate. You know, maybe the other country that maybe their trading partner needs rice. Well, they didn't sell their oil, so they don't have money to buy rice. What do they do? They got to find a buyer. They got to they they still need rice. They still need cash. But well, they got to sell something. But that's import export. That's import export. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, last thing because I don't want to hold you too long, um, Tony. I got all night. I'm good. Oh. I, have a, I have a question. What is our biggest importer export? I, I didn't hear your question. Say that again, please. I said, what is our biggest import or export? Uh, we are we are big agricultural. You know, that's a good question. Right, the United States is a we got great farmland. Right, one of our big exports. Lean hogs. 90% of the world get their protein from hogs. Right? They don't have chickens, they don't have cows, they don't have all they get it from pigs. Most of the world, right? So that's why one of the things that Trump is kind of pushing for, and, and soybeans, we got soybeans too. We got we sell a lot of soybeans. As a matter of fact, that's one of the things we lost during the trade war. We got those soybeans. They're now getting their soybeans from Russia, right? And those trade wars become real important. And I don't. And give me back on my point if I get off too far. Off. The trade wars become important because when you break those trade relationships that you had for years and years, you make me go find another supplier. And that month, the other supplier may be cheaper. He may have a better product. And if he does, why would I come back to you? That's the problem that the United States has with the trade tariffs, right? They went out and found Russia, who had a better soybean at a cheaper price. And now they're coming back to China and say, we want you to buy soybeans. Well, I got all the soybeans I need. What, what I need more soybeans for? Soy sauce? Hey, I got enough soy sauce. I got soybeans from Russia, right? So when, when you start talking about these imports and exports, right, this is one of the things that, uh, really really drives that economy maybe they only have the one thing or one major thing like steel or maybe they import or export a lot of wood for construction or or whatever it is right you gotta know what that thing is well, hey, did i ask you a question or did i get too far off track and lost myself um i think you did so basically we our greatest thing is we are Oh, agriculture. That's why I was going. Okay, so so our biggest thing is exporting, which is agriculture. We import now. We import a lot. Okay, that right? was going to be my next question. What do we import? Uh, Jessica, do do you remember that website I gave you? Uh, um, with with all the trade partners on it, I sent it to you in uh, Messenger. Do you still have that? Um, uh, let me see. 
I mean, if you send it to me, I definitely have it. Let me see. It is your... Got a funny name, A-G-I-S or something like that? Yeah, I see it. You want me to pull it up on here? Yeah, can you put it up on the screen, please? Yes. Do you, do, can't everybody see my screen? Does everybody see this um, whiteboard that I have? Yes, yes. ma'am. Yes, we can see yes. Okay, everybody has that? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, let no, me. No, 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 no. Okay. Screenshot. Yeah, let me screenshot. Yeah, screenshot it. it. And then I'm gonna go to this website. I'm pulling it up on my phone. Let me see. What I'm gonna do, actually, I'm gonna pull it up in our group chat. I'm gonna. Oh, okay. I just put it in our group chat, so it will just come straight up. Let's see. Just remind me to get back to remind me to get back to uh, uh, the companies inside the dial, the S and P, and the Nasdaq. If we don't get on this, then I'm gonna jump back over there. Okay. Okay. Is this what you were talking about? I don't see anything. Oh wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. One sec. I see my handsome face right now. Woohoo! And that's a nice looking fella. <laughs> Indeed. Let's see. Is this a website? No, girl, that's Corona. I know, I know. I see. A R C. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Hold on, let me see. I've been on find me find man. Oh no. All right. Let me see what I let me see I if I can. Find. Many messages, one sec. No, that's all right. Uh um, Did I send it to you there? Oh, here it is. Was that economic complexity of the imports, exports, and trade partners? It's OEC something. It's yeah, OEC. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got you. I promise. I got you. I got you. I'm going to pull it up right now. Okay. Did you say you sent the whiteboard in the chat? No, I sent oh. the links in the but the whiteboard should still be up. Um, I'm gonna go back to it after this. But I definitely I'm recording this, so you'll have it. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. You no problem. You no problem. Um, do you see it, Tony? You see my screen? Yes, I see it right there. There's 90 states. It's a good one right there. See this. If you want to do some research on imports, exports, and, and, just, and start to understand what companies are trading in, go to this website right here. Right, you see right there on the left, and, and two big two big buttons right there, importers and exporters, who imports in, who we export to, the trade balances, the destinations, the origins, all this crap is on this page. That you, that you probably, most of the things, I ain't gonna say everything, most of the things that you need is gonna be on this page. Even, even right here on this page, the top exports of the United States are refined petroleum, $74.5 billion in petroleum, right? Then you got cars at $56 billion. Right here on the first page, right? This answers your question. What are we importing and export right here? Okay. Who, who are those trade partners? Um, so Tony, I have a question, um, not to cut you off. So, okay, um, previously we we're talking about um, the earnings. Does this fall into like, um, how well does the, um, like countries do based on like how much they import and export um, yearly or like however long they look at that? Does that ma does, th does this factor in to how well the country does based on like its exports and um, imports as well or? It, it, it all matters, right? Their, their, their monetary policy matters, their fiscal policy matters, their, their, their trade wars, their imbalances, wars inside the countries. The, the company's earnings inside of those countries, they all matter about how, how well they do. Uh, in terms of imports and exports, right, if they don't have money, they can't really do much, right? They, they don't, they don't, or, or say, say for example, um, like say for example, we had that big bombing in, um, in uh, Saudi Arabia, something, something, they say it blew up, but I think a rocket hit it, right? And they had this big oil refinery go down, right? Did that really affect Saudi Arabia that much? Probably a little bit, it had a little ding on the little chart, but it didn't really affect their overall production of oil, 
you know, about how well they did that year. They still did fantastically great. They may have been down a couple of months on the one refinery. So with that, I mean, and it hurt the exports a little bit, but it didn't stop their production. It didn't slow them down where the country went into, you know, recession or anything like that. So yeah, it all matters, but I guess it's really going to depend on how much it matters. It's going to depend on how big that country is, how much, they, how much debt they have, you know, what's their GDP, uh, you know, are they at war? Do they have family in their country? What's, what's really going on in, in, that, in that country to determine if, if they can get their products in or out and how that country is going to do in terms of their GDP growth? I don't know if that made any sense. Maybe I was just babbling. Um, I do that me, you lost me at GPP. So if you could explain <laughs> it, I would appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> GD, GDP, I mean, that's probably a bigger, that's probably a bigger question. Uh, go, I mean, you, you can probably get a better explanation on GDP than I can give you off of investopedia.com. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you, you probably gonna get a, a much better explanation than I'm going to give you. I'm probably just going to mess it all up. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm about to move on, okay? Um, but I do want to add something to the whiteboard really quickly because we're supposed to have touched on the company's question. When, as a big, say so that again, you asked me a question. Wait, um, wait, Jess, before you move on, I'm sorry. Tell me want to expand on the S and P and the Dow Jones, um, real quick. Oh yeah. We okay. The S and P has 500 companies in it. The Dow has 30 companies in it, and the Nasdaq 100 has roughly about 3,000. No, hold on, it's about 100 companies in the Nasdaq. NASDAQ 100, but the overall NASDAQ has about 3,000 companies, but they only measure about the first 100, right? And these indexes are weighted, right? <clears throat> now, <clears throat> when you look at these indexes, especially something like the Dow, because everybody wants to trade US 30 or you know, the Dow or whatever, right? But they don't really understand what makes up the Dow, right? And what's and what fundamental news affect the companies that's in the Dow because the Dow is an index, but it's made up of companies. And those companies have earnings and those companies are affected by uh, trade wars. And they're affected by the Corona and they're affected by oil prices and they're affected by labor shortages and strikes, right? They're affected by crash, airplane crashes, Boeing airplane crashes, right? So, all of these things that we talked about in terms of fundamentals not only affect that country, but it affects those companies as well. They have the same type of needs, just on a smaller scale. The country needs oil, your company needs oil. You know, you know, company got to, got to travel, company, you know, countries got to travel, right? They get corona like everybody else, right? So these, these indices, are made up of these companies. Like Boeing, if you look at the, the Dow, for example, <laughs> the top 30 companies in the United States, is supposed to be a barometer of the market sentiment, and it is. But the overall health of the economy is measured by the S&P 500. Why wouldn't it be, right? It's 500 companies versus 30. 30 gives you the sentiment, 500 gives you the health, right? So when you're looking at something like the Dow and Boeing is the biggest company in the Dow, my opinion, it probably shouldn't be, but it is, right? So when Boeing has a catastrophe, it brings down the Dow. Where one goes, the other goes, right? They're, 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 they're a trio. If you have one going up and one going down, that's confusion, right? Mm -hmm. Would you agree? So yeah. you, you can't have you can't have 
one set of companies in the S&P 500 and the same set of companies in the Dow, and one is going up and one is going down. That's confusion. That's a mixed market, right? So if you know that Boeing just had two airplane crashes, they've been lying, they've been hiding secrets about what's going on, what do you think is going to happen to the Dow? It's going to go down. It's going to go down. Now, that wasn't technical at all, was it? It was all fundamental. No. Mm-hmm. It was fundamental. They had some crashes. They lost some money. People died. Stock is taking a hit. Now you get on the chart and say, where do I enter? This is where my technical analysis comes in. Okay, what's my best, what's my best entry? I know it's falling. I believe it's falling. I, and I know 99% of my heart is going to fall. Let's just wait for the fall. If you go long, you're probably going to lose your money. But if you catch that on that short, if you catch that right point, you can ride it to the hill fall, which the wheels fall off. Right? And then when they're ready to flip, you jump back out, wait for the next dip, because it's still falling. Fundamentals. Fundamentals and market sentiment play a very, very important role in which way you think something is going to roll. And, and if you're right, if you nail it right, you can get right in on that with your technical analysis and nail your entry because you already had an anticipation that it was going to go your way. That's why fundamentals are critical. Some people say straight technical, and technicals will get you your entry, but fundamentals will get you in early or get you in before the next guy, and that's what we call edge. Right? You got to edge on a guy who don't know he needs to look at fundamentals. Right? All those retail people out there say, well, I'm waiting for this 612 to cross or the 513 to cross. I'm going to wait for this to cross. I'm going to get in. Yeah, you're getting in there, but I was already in 45 minutes ago. Well, I already knew it was going to drop. So I took a chance and I just wrote it down. Don't be like me, though. You lose your money. I done done that before, too. Does everybody see how, like, all of these three, well, the three things correlate? So, like, when, when he talks about, like, Fundamentals, and I've talked about this before, how fundamentals comes out first. That's the news of the market. The sentiment is how people feel ultimately about the news that just occurred. That gives, okay, am I going to buy this or am I going to sell this? Am I going to take my money out or am I going to put my money in? And then our technical analysis is literally like understanding those entries and how to maximize off of what we are doing. Does that make sense? But I want everybody to understand that like fundamentals is like reading like you have to understand and go in detail it's a lot of reading like it's a lot of reading it's a lot of reading it's a lot of reading and it's not studying this is really really good jessica i my light bulb could come on i understand now why you always talk about this this really i appreciate you doing this for us because this is definitely got me thinking a whole different way. And, and thank Mr. Tony, because Mr. Tony. Yes, Mr. Tony, yes. Thank you, Mr. Tony. Thank you, Mr. Yes. Tony. Thank you, Mr. Tony. Mr. Tony. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he said don't call him Mr. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you, Tony. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> For us right now. Yeah, this, we this appreciate is, you. Thank you. We got this the sauce. Is, yeah, this is really, this is a game changer right here. I. I get it now. I, this I really is when we it. want you back again. Yes, Tony. No, you gotta back back. Like, Mr. Tony, well, Tony already told me he ain't coming back home. No, you can't do that to us. <laughs> he, said, he said, Jessica, I'm only doing this for you one time. I said, no. Nah, He's not going to be watching back. Uh, you're killing me. I'm a behind the scenes type of fella. I, I, I like to. I like to stay back there and make you look good. You're right. Yeah, yeah let's put together some videos in if you behind the scenes. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I'm a, he, he, he'll he'll probably come on one time. One, one, he'll probably come on in the future again. Can we have once a quarter? Once a quarter, Tony? Us? Uh, or three every four three months? months? I don't see my face too good. Once every right? month. Absolutely. See anybody that look like Tony, that's him. Let me think about it. Okay, he's going to think about it, y'all. He's going to think about it. Um, Does anybody have any ended questions? Y'all know we only last the hour. It's 925, so we are going into, we got five minutes.
So I have one last question. Um, it's probably a very basic question, but like I just want to understand, like as um when when the when the Dow or like um SP um SP five hundred and the Nasdaq they hit those um percentages and then they close down. The, when you say circuit breaker, this might be very trivial, but like when you say circuit breaker, is it like an actual circuit within the market or is it like the 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 bosses of those companies just like closing down their stocks until like for it to cool down? Like what exactly is happening within that process? That's a good question. You know, we went to the we went to the Chicago Board of Exchange uh, last summer, right? And when we went to the Chicago Board of Exchange. It's nothing like what you saw in trading places years and years ago with Eddie Murphy and Dan Aykroyd right on the floor and everybody screaming, "Sell the ad and buy this." Nothing like that anymore. It used to be four thousand, five thousand people on the floor. Now it's about two, about three hundred. Everything is, is digital now. Right, so all the stuff that you see on the TV, and they got those stock exchanges all filled up. They don't do that anymore. Right, it's all digital. So when they when they when they program this thing, and they say if this thing falls seven percent, cut it off. They just stop trading. I mean, I don't. There's not wizard man back there pulling lever saying, you know, stop the market. You know, it's it's computerized. It's it's that they got they got algos. You know, they 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 got certain levels that they hit. When they hit those levels, they shut things off, right? And then they, they wait the amount of time, and then they shut them back on. It's all digital, right? But if you want to, if you want to find out about circuit breakers and levels, go to always go to investopedia.com. It's got everything out there you ever want to know about trading. Investopedia. Here go some websites for you, right? <laughs> Are you all right? That was somebody. I don't know what was going on. Go to go to these websites. Investopedia.com. Investopedia.com, mm -hmm. investing.com, CNBC, uh, Yahoo Finance, right? CNBC is probably going to be, the, if, you, if you got a phone, it's an Android or, or Apple or whatever, download it on your phone. It's going to be one of the fastest ways to get free data, right? You can get it off of other places. You can get it off of Yahoo, but they tend to be a little slow. CNBC pushes that information right to your phone. It, it, it'll pop up a little header and say, you know, something happened in the market, blah, blah, blah. You click on it, it takes you to the whole website, right? You can get some other ones, but those are those are one of the few ones. Invest investing.com, they got a bunch of ads and all, you know, doing all that. So go to cnbc.com, right? We also mentioned another tool. Did I mention it? Jessica, think, think or swim. All right. I know you did it anyway. Okay, all right, we're not gonna mention it, but it's called Think or Swim. But uh, when you, when you, can you talk want, about it if you want to, like, I don't know how much time you have. Typically, I only do an hour, but I don't have, I did my student that I usually have at 9 30. Um, he had his session earlier today, so you can go longer if you want. Uh, I won't go over your lot of time. If you want me to go, I can go. I stay, I stay. Stay. Uh, go, 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 go. Hey! Hey! Why are you rushing? We ain't rushing you. Preach. <laughs> Give us a word. Give us a word. I give you fifteen minutes because Jessica's my sheet. All right, we'll do fifteen. We do about fifteen minutes, right? All right. We'll take so it. They, 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 they got those websites. If you want another website, right, that you can get free real time data off of, right? You get free news, free real time data. You, you get, you get. Free uh, real time stock updates. It's called Think or Swim. It's, it's put out by Ameritrade, but you're going to have to open an Ameritrade account. Opening an account is free. You don't have to put any money in it for real. And you, and you have to sign up as a personal person instead of a business. You sign up as a business, they're going to charge you. Right? But if you get that, it's a, it's a complicated tool. But it, it gives you a lot of analysis, it gives you a lot of news. You can watch videos right in there from CNBC, from uh, uh, the Maritrade Network in um, Europe, Asia, and the United States news, right? And it's going to start to, it's going to be a little advanced, probably. But you'll probably like the charting part of it, but the rest of it is going to be really advanced. And it has a really, really, really good education uh, portion in there. It'll start walking you through what these things are about options and, and ETFs and uh, futures and things like that. So you can get, you can get all this information 
in one little one little website, one little tool, right? And if you want to put money in the right trade, of course, of course, they, that's what they want you to do. But you don't have to. You just have to open the account, right? And you get all that data. So, when you, anybody got any questions? Somebody had asked about Bloomberg in the chat. Um, Bloomberg. Bloomberg is good, but they charge you. Right? Now, I mean, I, I don't know what they charge. I think it's like a dollar a month or three dollars a month or something to get their news. Yeah. yeah, I can take it or leave it, really. I can get everything I need off of CNBC, Yahoo Finance, Investing.com. All right? But it really comes down to the speed of data. How, how fast are you getting it? If you if you're getting it in real time, why pay for it? If you get it from Ameritrade for free, why pay for it? Stupid. It don't make it don't make sense. Mm -hmm. right? It's the same data. Ameritrade already they already massaged it. Right? They're just giving it to you. So if you want to pay for it, I mean do my guess, but get the free stuff first. What 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 else what else you need to know? You got, US, you, got, uh, US, you got 10 minutes. US 30 has paused, so I guess one of those circuit breakers has activated. Yes. When okay, the thing about the the thing about the futures, right? It's not it's not it's not like they're gonna restart it. If it hits five percent, and I have to remember if it's four percent or five percent, I think it's five percent. If it hits five percent in the futures market, it's done the rest of the night. They're not gonna start it back. It's over. It, and if you're on the wrong side of that trade, right, when it hits and it opens up the other way and it gaps up tomorrow, guess what you just done? You done lost all your money. Maybe blowing up the account, whatever, right? So that's how those, that's why those levels start to become important. You know, you know, you, you, if you guys seen the movie The Big Short, when that guy shorted the entire market, right, and he bought he bought all his money to, to keep buying all these short positions, right? That's not about to happen. They are not about to let. We thought it was going to happen. We were positioning ourselves for it to happen. But then we found out it's not about to happen. Right? They're going to put these breakers in place, and you may get 20%, and you can get some good money. But it's not going to be like it was. It's not just going to drop all the way down to a. Oh, so, I do have something since we have 10 minutes left. Um, can you please, because I just feel like this is important that they know what we were talking about last night about um well one the rate cut and then also the whole gold conversation we were having can you break that down uh the rate cut what rate cut are you talking about the one that happened to the zero percent yes i mean well, i mean okay the thing that you need to understand about the Federal Reserve System, central banking system, if they only have so many bullets, they only got so many weapons, right? Rate cuts is one. You talk about quantitative easing, right? You talk about them funding the repo market. Does everybody know what quantitative easing is? No. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm gonna get it to you, right? And you're talking about the, the repo market, right? All of this, all of this starts to talk about all of these things together or individually really has to do with market liquidity, right? When you start talking about quantitative easing, and we've been through a couple of them uh, during the financial crisis, this happened 10 years ago. And basically all they did was they opened up their checkbook and they said, oh, we got a trillion dollars. Let's add some zeros. And they pumped that amount of money into the market and they just created money they didn't print it they, they didn't ask for permission for it they went in there and they just wrote some zeros in and they said this is what we got on our books now now we both did that we all did that we go to jail i'm gonna go to the bank and say hey man i got a million dollars on that tomorrow i got 10 million take it we all go to jail right but these jokes just opened up their little balance sheet and wrote in some zeros and said that's how, that's how much money we have in the market that's all quantitative even was they wrote in some zeros that's it Without right. the money actually being there, or like they have the money. Oh, they don't really have. You think they have? Money? They don't have no money. Money has okay. They don't have this money. They just they they did not print up. They did not print up like ten trillion dollars or anything like that. 
they just literally wrote in. You know what I mean? And like, this is what we got now to deal with. It's our balance sheet that went from a billion to a trillion. Deal with it. That's all they did. And they start, they start handing out this money, right? And they hand out money through debt instruments, bonds, things like that, right? See, money is created through debt instruments, right? When you go, when you go, it doesn't exist until then, right? When you go, when you say, I go to the bank to borrow some money. Right, that's just an IOU, and the bank takes that IOU and gives it to this other guy. He said, "Well, this guy owes me a a hundred dollars, so I'm gonna charge him ten percent, and you don't charge me whatever you don't charge me." It's just an IOU, right? So money gets created out of bonds. Bonds is the biggest, it's the biggest market. Debt is debt is the biggest market in the world, right? Can you see my screen, Tony? What screen is that? The U.S. National Debt Card. I don't see that. Yeah, because you said you didn't see my whiteboard either. Can't everybody see my screen? We only see your whiteboard. See your whiteboard. Oh, that's so awkward. I'm so sorry. Hold on. Okay. That's very awkward. Now can you see it? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. So this money gets created. Money on this gets created when there's a, a debt instrument that's, that's created, right? I'm going to borrow this money, so we agree that you need this money. You sign for the money, money gets created. The debt gets created, right? That's it. That's how it comes into existence. It's just your promise to pay. Ain't no money back there. You think, you think when you buy a house, they transfer $100,000 to the next guy? They send that guy out, you saying I owe you $100,000. And you owe, owe them hundred thousand dollars plus interest. Well, you owe them four hundred thousand. He owed the next guy one hundred fifty thousand because he borrowed his money and on and on and on. Right? That's how. It, that's how it goes. You know. So that's what we, that's what we have. So if we're increasing our debt, what does that mean for the country? Then, but doesn't that mean that we're just like growing in debt? Like when we already have tons of debt already, or I mean, we all gonna die. We all gonna die poor. No, I'm just playing. But what it, <laughs> what it what it what it what it basically means is yes. The more money in circulation, the weaker the the, the weaker it gets, the weaker the dollar gets. Right now, some this is gonna lead us into the next four or five minutes that we have. Right, I got. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go really really quick. Right, some people think that. The money that we have, the, the, the paper dollar, is going to last forever. It's not, right? Every, every fiat currency that ever existed in the history of the world, they have all died a horrible death. Every last one of them, 100% failure rate. So what does that mean? That brings us to the question then is, okay, we make all this money in Forex and the US 30 and all this other stuff. The dollar goes to zero. What do you do? Right? What happens? Well, you just... Really have nothing because it, it is it, it is nothing, right? And it brings me to two points, real quick. Uh, gold, silver, precious metals, right? If you want to find out about? It, want to find out about that? Go to goldsilver.com, right, and look up uh, hidden secrets of money or secrets of money. It's under one of those across the top. It's about ten to twelve videos in there. Watch those videos and watch them in order. It explains everything you need to know about currency, money. All the fiat currency, all that crap, right? Really, really, really good series of videos. Number two, inflation, right? If the dollar continues to fall and the interest rate is zero, it's gonna. They have they have a, pot a potential a potential of overstimulating. If they overstimulate the economy too much, we could go into inflation. If they can't run, if they can't rein in inflation, they're going to go to. They could potentially go to hyperinflation. And basically what hyperinflation means is that you wake up one day, you go to bed one day, a loaf of bread costs $1.29, wake up the next bed costs $10,000, right? Because your currency is 100% worthless. It's happened before, it's gonna happen again. And just because, just because people think the United States dollar is the almighty thing, that it can't happen, it can and it will. And if you don't have precious metals in your portfolio, 
somewhere, store it off on site, we'll keep it in the whole backyard. If this thing ever goes to nothing, and you don't have any metals in your portfolio, you're gonna be screwed. It's really just that simple. And you mean like actual metals? You should have. But like metal metals, like metals in your pocket metals. Like, okay, like physical, like we need to. Physical, yeah, I've got my hands on the metals. <laughs> Taking it back to the barter system? Yeah. <laughs> now, you, you talk about currency and you talk about money, right? They're two different things, right? And when you watch those videos from uh, goldsilver.com, it's going to explain what those differences are, right? And it's going to explain it a whole lot better than I can, right? But you watch those videos and it's going to, you're going to understand that what we have is currency and what metals are, precious metals, silver, gold, platinum, palladium, things like that, that's money. Mm. It's the only real money that exists in the world. There's only so much of it. And they're digging out of the ground by the tons. Right? You and I, we can't dig it out by the tons. You can get one here, one there. Right? So the, they had a the thing on TV. You remember the thing on TV they had a little while ago? Send us your gold. We'll send you two. And people were sending their gold and they would get two or three hundred bucks. Oh my god. Ounce of gold, like food. Gold is fifteen hundred bucks an ounce. You just sold it for three hundred bucks. Mm. Right? And they selling this gold by the ounces and they give them three hundred bucks for it. And they they happy and they got they got their little, you know, TCL TV and they great. But they just gave away twelve hundred dollars. Just gave it away. Mm -hmm. okay. So you gotta know what these things are and what they mean for your life. Right? And when, the, and when the rubber meets the road and the economy keeps dipping like it is, it's gonna get real, real serious about the haves and the have nots. It's not gonna be any middle class, it's gonna be rich, it's gonna be poor. All that crap in the middle don't go away. Rich people don't need middle class people. They need poor people. Fix these burgers and wash these cars to serve their food at restaurants. They don't need you with all your rights and opinions. They need you to serve their burgers. <laughs> if that's honest truth. Middle class people got rights and opinions. They don't need you. They need you serving burgers. So then this might be reaching a little bit. So then how would you like with the with the videos that you want us to watch, would they recommend how we could like gain access to like actual real metals like gold and silver? Like several websites you can go to. Uh All right. Amex. Right. Uh I can't think of the third one. It's another one. But you can go to the you can go to the mint. You can go directly to the Canadian mint. You can go to the US mint. You can you can go to any you can go to any government mint and buy directly from the mint. But nine times out of ten, you're gonna to go to a distributor like JM or Amex, and it's a or go or gold silver. Gold silver is a is a broker, right? And you buy through them, and you're gonna see what they call uh, a price of gold, and you're gonna see a spot price. Spot price is the is the, is the price that you're gonna. It's, it's it's gonna be a premium added to every piece that you buy, and that's the money that the broker makes, right? So if, if gold is hundred bucks an ounce, they're gonna add the price on that says three dollars, right? You'll pay 103 bucks, they get to keep the three dollars, right? So you're actually overpaying it for the price of gold, right? But you have to you have to understand why you're selling it or why you're holding it. Are you holding it as a as a store of value or you are you holding to trade? Right? And when you get your metals, when you, if you if you start buying metals, right, understand how to treat how to hold your metals with care for them. Don't use your naked hands, put all that greasy, nasty oil on it. Get, get you some gloves, get you some things to protect your metals. Because once you start, you know, you know, discoloring the metals, it start losing its value. Mm -hmm. Right? And you want to protect it. You want to keep it in protective cases, throw it off site somewhere, wherever you want to put it. You can give hey, it to you me. I start the website so I can write them down for them. You said Amex. Amex, J M Bullion. J M Bullion. J M B U L L I O N. All right, and, and gold, silver. Those are the ones come off the top of my head, dot com. All these are dot com, right? And they would, and they will like what, send it to us or? 
Is yeah, it? that's in it. Okay. Rich, gold is a rich man's metal. Silver is a poor man's metal. <laughs> that's not true. Gold, silver is probably going to outperform gold since gold is already so high. And you can buy a lot more silver with a hundred dollars than you can with gold. Gold, you will get a fraction of an ounce or a fraction of a gold. But with a hundred dollars out of silver, you you get what five pieces, six pieces, and they they sell them by the ounce. That's the standard size, right? So anything less than that is a non-standard size for for a metal. I know. And just one ounce gold, fifteen hundred dollars, right? It, it, whatever the prevailing price is right now, yes. So if you bought gold last week and it was you know two weeks ago, to seventeen hundred bucks, and it's down to fifteen hundred, you lost two hundred bucks. It brings me to another point about why they sell and why they sell metals and what's and what are safe havens. Look up safe havens as well. There's certain there's there are certain currencies and commodities that are considered safe havens. And this is important in your fundamental analysis as well. Because if you understand what safe havens are and what they do and what they're supposed to do, you can start to understand what they're doing now and why that's a problem. Because they're not behaving like safe havens. And that's a problem for the analysts. They don't know what to do. They don't know how to interpret it. But if you understand the fundamentals behind it, you realize that all these analysts, most of these analysts don't know what they're talking about. And you would say, hey, that guy said this, and I don't think that's right. He said that the price of oil is going to spike. But I know for a fact it's going to fall today because the underlying fundamentals are weak. That makes sense? Yeah. So do you foresee us going into like this real like re recession? Like, do you is this like the beginning stages for a recession or a depression? As um, yes, Carol. <laughs> yes. A recession is classified as two negative, two consecutive quarters of negative growth. Um, right. So six months. Right. If this thing keeps falling, it isn't falling for I don't know, I don't know how many months now. But if it keeps falling to the second quarter, yes, we're going to be officially in a recession. Right now, they consider this a bear trend, right? A bear trend is a 20% drop, you know, a 10% correction, 10% is a correction, 20% is a shift, market shift. So we shifted from, bear, from bullish to bearish when it dropped 20%. We hit those circuit breaker levels at, at 7, 13, and 20%, right? So if it drops 20% and it stops trading for the day, that means it's officially shifted from a bull trend to a bear trend. I mean, from a bull market to a bear market. So if you're still trading long, you probably trade against the trend. Oh, you can really? do it. I'm sorry. Yes, can, you, can you explain the limit, the limit up and the limit down? I think the CNBC just um, sent out news, but I didn't, I didn't really see it, but I just saw limit up. Can you just explain that real quickly, like what that was again? The limit down? That's the, mm -hmm. that's, that's the, that's the circuit breaker level that they put in, the New York Stock Exchange put in place to keep the market from free ball. Mm -hmm. Right? The first level is 7%, the second level is 13%, and the third level is 20%. If the first level goes to, if it hits the first circuit breaker, level one, it stops for 15 minutes. They restart the market, see if it continues to fall. If it falls, if it keeps falling, they'll let it fall to 13%, which is the second level. Then they'll stop it for another 15 minutes. So there's 30 minutes altogether right there. If they open it back up and it continues to fall to 20%, they shut down the markets for the day. So if you were in those positions, and they shut down that market for the day, and you're on the wrong side of it, even if you're on the right side of it, you want to get out because you don't know what's going to happen in after hours trading. You don't know if the next day when, it, when, you can, when you can finally start trading it again, whether it's going to gap up or you, you have no idea. So you don't want to get stuck in those trades as you approach those levels, is my opinion. I'm not a financial advisor. I don't get financial advice. It's educational purposes only. All right. So, uh, so, so just be careful when you when you're looking at those those levels and on S and P, right? And see where they are. And I don't know where they hit today. I know they hit those levels at least twice. Cause I know it stopped twice, right? But it never hit that that third level, which was twenty percent. 
think it came close like 17, 18 or something, something like that, I remember. But I don't think it ever hit 20%. Ms. Sophie, you got another question? Somebody like you just firing them all. Um, yes, I do have another question. I'm so sorry. Um, I'm just so intrigued. Um, okay, so, okay, so, because I know somebody also put it inside the chat. Okay, because I know you just stressed the importance of, like, you know, um, investing and buying, like, um, actual metals. Then what's, what's your stance on, like, cryptocurrency? I don't really have a stance on cryptocurrency. I don't understand it well enough. Okay. I got it. The guy that you might want to talk to about cryptocurrency, the digital currency guy, Jamar James. He is an expert. Can, can, I, can you repeat that? Who? Mark James? Jamar. Jamar James. You'll find him on Facebook under DCG. You might go to DCG.com, digital currency guy. Okay. Tell him, tell him, tell him I sent you through an affiliate program and tell me he need me send me 100 cryptos per person. <laughs> you said ecg.com dcg david charlie gary okay all right okay thank I, I, I know jessica gotta go i think i'm gonna um have somebody kind of like because i have like friends that are very very deep into okay so let me explain trading right everybody has different stuff that they trade like i wanted him to come on here because he is a fundamental like guru so Literally, some people trade fundamentals only, some people trade technicals only, some people, like one of my friends, he don't trade currency at all, he only trades Bitcoin. Um, so I'll have somebody come on here, definitely reach out to the guy Tony's talking about, but I'll have somebody, I'll see when he can come on here and talk about this next time. Um, I like and just give you guys some insight on it, because like, I understand fundamentals for the most part. I know it, but like I would rather bring people that like that's the expert expert, bring them on here and have them like give you a rundown of everything. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. 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 So um everybody say thank you, Mr. Tony. Thank you, 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 Tony. See you in three months, Tony. Tony. She said she's going to see you in three months. See you in three months. See you in three months. I want to say reach out to me, but I don't want you to do that. I will take that as a half extended invitation. Oh, wow. Reach out to me. Amen. 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 It is done. This was really good. Tony, thank you so much again. You did yourself tonight, girl. Thank you. If you have any questions, reach out to Jessica. I may come on soon if she really, really cool. Thank you. I told her this was the last and only one, but I, I don't know. I don't I don't really like doing these, but I, I may I may do it. You're a natural. Come on. Mm -hmm. No, I, I I make you look good, but I'll be behind the curtain doing it. All right. I'm going to get out of here now. Anybody anybody have, have anything? Uh, just reach out to Jessica and, and she get in touch with me some kind of way. Then I, if, she, if there's enough interest, I'll come back to the, answer those questions and things like that. Okay. I'm not going to leave you high and dry if I don't have to. All right. We appreciate well, yes, Tony's amazing. Like, literally, I know he did not want to come on here, but Tony, I'm so grateful. Thank you so much. I told you that, like, literally, this would be so much insight for, insight for so many people. So, guys, I'm happy that you were able to get what you needed tonight. Um, I will definitely work on Tony to see if he can come back more frequently than every four months. But, you know, we also have to respect his time and what he has going on um, because he's a very busy person as well. So, I hope everybody has a good night and make sure y'all stay away, social distancing, do not get coronavirus, all right? And have a great night. Thanks, Jessica. Bye. All right, bye. Jessica. 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 Jessica.